Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, A. Joe, Two in Love. Here back with Sports Overview Topics, episode number 37. Um, I apologize, first of all, for the other day. Uh, no AW review. Uh, I lost my voice. Relatively, I've been feeling better as the week has gone on. But nonetheless, sorry about that. But thank you for joining me today. And got a few news and to go over today on the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Like I said, new, like, and subscribe. Click on that bell for all your notifications. With that, let's get into the news, shall we? We have a bunch to go over. Or a few. So, the big news today I want to go over. J.J. Watt is now an Arizona Cardinal. Man, that kind of came out of left blue, or left field, excuse me. But I think we can all agree that we thought that he was going to go to either the Steelers to play with his brothers, Green Bay, because... That's where he went to college, or Wisconsin. You know, Buffalo, they said he was in the mix, or they said was in the mix. Tennessee, my prediction, because, you know, staying in the division. But he's going to Arizona, the Cardinals, to reunite with his former teammate, DeAndre Hopkins. With a young, exciting team that barely missed the playoffs last year. Overall, when you think about it, two years, 31 million. I mean, when you think about it, first of all, they're an exciting team with a young offense. Kyle Murray, obviously, DeAndre Hopkins. Got some nice running backs. And as far as the defense side, you know, they got Chandler Jones on one side, assuming he comes back healthy. And then you got J.J. Watt coming on the other side. That's a uh, dynamic duo on the edge. Interesting. Plus, when you think about the division, you got potentially Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford, and Jimmy G to face off against the opposing quarterbacks. So with that, you're going to need a solid pass rush. Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt, assuming both stay healthy, that's going to be very interesting for the Arizona Cardinals. But good for JJ and good for the desert, good for Arizona. This just adds to the moral of how good the NFC West is going to be next year. With the Rams now. The Seahawks, assuming they keep Russell Wilson. And the 49ers, assuming they stay healthy. But all these dynamics make for a fun year in the NFC West. And good move for the Cardinals, like I said. Good moves for J.J. Watt. Speaking of Russell Wilson, though, I mean, he hasn't requested a trade, but they have put out there that if he were to get traded, there's four teams that they said he would be traded to. 
And the four teams that fall are the Raiders, the Saints, the Cowboys, and the Bears. And I wanted to talk about which of the four, not comparing to Seattle, but which team would be the better fit for Russ Wilson, assuming he is traded. Let's start with the Raiders. I mean, it's like, okay, you got their car. You have it. If they want a quarterback in return, then that's an option. But when you look at that team, it's like, okay, they got a really solid O-line. They got some good receivers. Josh Jacobs has come into a young female. Their defense needs work. But that division would be tough. Because Mahomes and the Chiefs. Herber and the Chargers. That would just be tough. But. When you think about it. Would it be a good situation for Russ? I think so. Plus you can give. The Seahawks. A quarterback. In return. In their car. Next up are the Saints. Now, the Saints, they're still lingering on Drew Brees' decision. Whether he retires or he comes back for another year. <clears throat> but when you think about it, let's say Russ, or let's say Drew Brees retires. He got... They're still very much over the cap are the Saints. But in a trade, you could trade either... Well, Taysom Hill is still on their contract. So you could trade Taysom Hill. Jameis Winston is going to be a free agent. So trade Taysom Hill. Maybe a receiver, someone on defense, you know, Jonoris Jenkins, someone. But you could give the Seahawks a couple playmakers if they so desire. Oops, sec. Sorry about that, my TV went off, but yeah, so the Saints would very much be a good candidate if they can solve their cap hit issue. Now let's go to the Cowboys. The Cowboys, I mean... My prediction, my prediction is I don't think they're going to re-sign Dak. Just because I think he's pricing himself out of Dallas. And I don't think they're willing to pay him as much. If they... We're going to get a deal done. They will have gotten a deal done already. But. So. I don't think that's going to resign. Now. When you look at that offense. You know. They got to see Gilead. Uh, some linemen are going to come back from injury. You know. Tyron Smith. Zach Barton. Wow. Collins. I mean, that O-line was 
disintegrated with injury last year. Plus, you got Mark Cooper, C. Lamb, Gallup, some good receivers, plus Blake Jarwin, who was her most of last year. You got some good pieces of offense. Trading for Russ. You can probably give up a lineman, a receiver. I mean, the Seahawks don't really need receivers, but they do need linemen. So that's dynamic, dynamic work in the trade. Maybe give up one of the f- front four guys. I don't know, it's thought to pair with Carl Studlap. Interesting thought, though. And lastly, we go to the Bears. Now, the Bears... Besides the Saints are the only t- team that made the playoffs out of these four teams last year. The Bears are very much close and have been for the last few years, but the offensive side has held that defense back. And so, having Russ, and I respect Mitchell Trubisky, and, but to be honest, if the Bears were to get Russ, it kind of be like, that offense, how it was towards the end of the year, you know, with the running the ball, David Montgomery came on well that year, last year. Had over a thousand yards. If they can play like that, plus Russ gives the dimension of off the script plays downfield. And with Donald Mooney, because we saw many times last year, Donald Mooney has speed. And unfortunately, they weren't able to connect on certain plays to really use his speed. Now, I know that O-line has a lot to be desired. But Russ's speed would definitely help out. And we saw with Trubisky, they were able to use his strengths. And definitely Russ would be an add. And that offense could really help out. That defense kind of balance it. You could give the Seahawks a playmaker on defense. <coughs> Excuse me. And really set that trade. Ultimately, if I had to look at it, I'd say the team that is a better fit Is either the Raiders or the Cowboys? Actually, with that, I'd say the Cowboys because of what they could offer the Seahawks and that division as well. When you look at the NFC East, because it sounds like they're going to part ways with Alex Smith in Washington. You all know, will it be Taylor Heineke? 
or someone else at QB in Washington. Jalen Hurts, I think is going to be a starter in Philly, but it just sounds like a trouble situation. And the Giants, I have a lot of respect for. I think they'll be contending for the division again. But their team on the rise. <clears throat> Overall, I think the best fit out of these four for Russ would be the Cowboys. Next, getting into a topic of the NBA, which a team that I think is really underrated right now, I think are the Spurs. The San Antonio Spurs are five games over 500, are fifth in the West. And they are the best team right now no one is talking about, I would say. Now, I get it. You got the Lakers, LeBron, Giannis, the Bucks, Brooklyn, you see what they're doing, Philly, the Suns, but a team to watch out for are the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs, now I get it also, they don't have a household glorified name. You know, they got DeMar DeRozan, they got Derek White, they got Lamarcus Aldridge. But they are hanging tight and another year the Spurs, I mean, of course we know they've been in contention really every year under Popovich, but they are flying under the radar, and I guess that's the way Pop likes it to be. And well deserved, but they are very underrated. Last thing I want to talk about today is UFC 259 is coming up on Saturday. John Blahovich versus Israel Asanya, the main event. Title unification belt. Or, yeah, title moving up. Israel Asanya moving up from 185 to challenge Jan Bohovic. It's an interesting fight because Asanya 20 and 0. He has really just taken the UFC by storm. I mean, he beat Kelvin Gaslam in a great fight. He clocked Robert Whitaker. He got past Joel Romero. He decked Paulo Costa. Just in those four fights alone, you know how dangerous he has been. And this fight, another dangerous challenge. Jan Blachowicz, Mr. Polish Power, who white pass Dominic Reyes to win the vacant fight heavyweight title of the world. He is as scary as a quiet guy is. I mean, you look at him, and he is jacked. He is 
quiet, but that Polish power is fierce. Ever since coming in to face Alexander Gustafsson, he has right been near the top and now what's interesting about this fight is three middleweights coming up from 185 have faced Jan Blachowicz. You know, Thiago Santos who has found a new home at 205. He beat Jan Bohovic. But really, when you think about it, Santos is a 205er. Then you got Rockhold, who got swept by Jan. And then Jacare, who lost in a decision to Jan. So, this is the fourth time a guy from 185 is coming up to face Jan. Now, Jan, or excuse me, Asanya, he doesn't look like a 185 pounder. He is, looks much lighter. He is very much Anderson Silva, that look. And that build. And he knows how to move in and out. And strike. When he needs to. It'll be a real question to see. How. His power. Lands on Jan. That's a real question. But <clears throat> I'm gonna go with Asanya though. It's just from what I've seen I mean Jan you know he's powerful but you haven't he hasn't faced a guy that can slip in and out and find a way to be on the hit like Asanya knows how to do. So with that, I'm going with Asanya to beat Jan Bohovic. So that's all the news I've had for today. I apologize again. The other day for no AEW Dynamite review. But thank you for joining me today. I am Angel True Love. Um, I should be back on Thursday with the AEW review. But thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe. Click on that bell. See you all Thursday. Peace.